All right, I really have to think about how I'm gonna say this because it's it's a difficult situation. I love steroids. I think it's one of the most useful tools in my life to build a physique, to create really good quality of life. However, when used incorrectly, they're also damning, like really damning. Like they can actually kill you. Unity felt the sting of tragedy with the passing of many beloved figures. Here is a remembrance of some of those who have left us. Justin Vicky. Now, I know this is a highly contradicting point to a lot of the previous points I've made on this channel. The reason that I do argue against using steroids is often because of that feeling being so hard to get away from. That feeling of being like Superman, getting off of that is pretty almost <laughs> impossible, if we're being honest. And the reality is, is that people start maybe somewhere that is modest with their usage and could be considered a non-issue, but then that soon elevates into something that is a huge issue. And this is why I highly suggest against using steroids for many people. I have discussed in like so many videos at this point the data that we have on steroids and their effects in the brain, altering reward systems and becoming actually physiologically addictive in a sense. What I do on this channel is not fear mongering, it's not also promoting steroids, and it's certainly not being hyperbolic. I'm here to tell you the real science and then as well my personal experience with some of the things that I've done as well as coached many other people through. And then using that with the combination of things that are happening in a real society or in our tribe as a fitness community. So this just recently popped up in my inbox and I figured it was worth having a conversation about. So we'll just quickly recap for a few seconds if you don't know who this is and what he's referring to. This is Shizzy and he's been on our channel twice. His natural status is a bit questionable and his influence within the fitness influencing industry is a bit questionable as well. He's not the best person, but he's not the worst person in terms of what he's done for the industry and the people he's helped motivate getting into fitness and health. Now, who he's referring to in this particular story is Alex Eubank, someone who's been a lifetime quote-unquote natural athlete for pretty much his whole life, as he's said, or at least claimed, and now he took the delve into using a quite a bit higher than normal TRT dose. And Alex himself is someone we've covered on this channel about this specific issue before. And as of recently, he made a post on YouTube saying that he's gained upwards of 15 pounds since starting 200 milligrams of testosterone, which he said he's soon going to elevate, most likely. Imagine that. So then at some point during this period of time, Shizzy, who again also claims as a lifetime natural, which I made the point of being highly, highly unlikely, claims that uh, this was impressive and it was motivating to him in this photo. And here's the really big problem with this. Outside of having laughably bad tattoos, it seems that what Alex is doing and people like Shizzy are catching on to is a quick scapegoat for them. They haven't been natural or maybe have just been using a little bit of something or another and then they use this whole, well, I'm low on testosterone or I really wanted to see what my physique could do as a, as a scapegoat to really get away from having to tell people that they've actually been using steroids when they claim natural. They can easily say, well, I'm transitioning to being not natty and start using something whilst having already been enhanced for quite some time. Essentially, it's a movement for people to save face whilst still telling half truths to their audience. Yeah, bro, I've been working so hard. I'm just beat. My body needs it. Meanwhile, in the past three years, they were blasting to the moon. The other issue here that I think is even the more present and significant one is the impressionable audience viewing all of this content. While influencers don't really realize it, their messaging does matter in some different ways and the logic behind their audience isn't very great. Sometimes it can be quite skewed as I've experienced myself. The way they speak, publish content, and do things in really any way is consumed by people of all ages and demographics. If someone goes on the internet posting a story about how a huge influencer, a multi-million follower influencer, gets on the sauce and how motivating it is for him to do the same, keep in mind that both of these individuals already have top tier physiques for the average viewer, what does a 16 year old think? And maybe you're smart enough to see that these opinions shared by people online, like these influencers, aren't that significant and shouldn't play a role in your life, but I promise you, everyone online is not that intelligent. Let's be honest, guys. When you get an audience as large as theirs, the large lump sum of their audience has pretty low IQs. I mean, I'm not trying to be rude, but like you and I are likely above average in terms of the average viewer on most people's content online. They eat things up, just content consumption, they slop it around in their brain, and literal intentions are created and necessary actions from the content that they consume. These people aren't normal, but they are chronically online individuals. So now a kid sees Alex blowing up 
his already amazing physique to an even more amazing physique to then see a huge influencer who also has an amazing physique talk about possibly doing the same thing. What does he feel like? What, what are his interpretations of that situation? Does he have a fear of missing out or that he might never not achieve the physique that they have? Does he feel less than because he hasn't acquired their physique and now they're gonna be getting on gear and so the only reasonable solution for him to be more than is maybe to follow suit? Yeah, bro, maybe this is just right for me. Or shit, if the lifetime natural I've been following to motivate my journey is hopping on after everyone else has already been on, What's the point in not doing it anymore? And I think Alex said one thing really specifically in his video coming out about this whole thing, which is that he had been holding himself for what? Like he'd been holding himself from using PEDs for what? As if it was like this whimsical thing and there wasn't any actual implications behind using steroids. And honestly, this is 100% what people are gonna think. It might not be you and me, but there's a millions of people following these guys. Now, I don't really know what the right way is to go about this. In my mind, if I had my way, I think the answer is really simple, but it just turns out to not be that simple. But my answer, which many of you don't like, is keep all social media use 18 plus. Problem solved in a lot of ways. This isn't censorship, it's just the prevention of dulling a youthful mind. Yes, you might be able to interpret the small shifts in habits or posting of content over time as well as messaging over time, but I think that most people who are chronically online don't. Most people, like with no shot, they consume all the content all day long and live on that hype train. And I really don't have a better idea than that because influencers are gonna do what influencers do. They're one of the main sources of income for multiple companies in our domain in fitness, but even extending beyond that. Things like Sleep Aid, a company that fucking produces beds, makes multi-billions of dollars from their influencer marketing. And the best way to become an influencer is become radicalized somehow in a way that's going to basically pull you through the algorithm and put you in front of everybody else, or to have such an outrageous claim to fame that it's almost unbelievable. It's kind of just a really shitty situation that harms our society in a multi-faceted way. It's, it's not an easy solution. There is no easy solution. There's no one size fits all answer. It's a tough one because the way that I am at least seeing things go online and the thing I've talked about in many of my videos is that the trend is now becoming to start the gym, get on cycle immediately, and the other things are left out. The what after is left out. The what is the point of doing all this is left out. And instead it's just immediately pull out the camera and do 30,000 reps of take gym selfies in the gym as opposed to like actually do anything with their physiques or the steroids that they're using. Now in like a competitive bodybuilder sense, I think there's application for steroids because they're doing it for a competitive sport and a career where a lot of these influencers go wrong or I should say want to be influencers is that they're using steroids on the hope that they develop a career, but oftentimes they don't have the ability to do so. It is a very unique set of circumstances that have to be checked off the list to become an influencer, and those circumstances are far and few between when they're actually met. It's, it's literally the stars aligning. You have to have great genetics as a physique, great genetics as a like actual on the, on the scale of attractiveness. You have to have a robust personality and you have to be able to have honestly an insane willpower to post content multiple times a day on multiple different platforms, all kind of congruently going in the same direction. It's intense. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below. Let's have a discussion. I love doing that shit. I'll catch you in the next video. If you haven't already subscribed as well, that helps a lot. Sorry for the low quality uh, production here, but it's what it is.